Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. New Year's. We're the same people, though. So welcome back to 2024. We are the motherfucking Bar, Bar Talk, Talk podcast. podcast. Yes, sir. And this is episode, I don't know. No, what episode is this? I have no clue, bro. I think we lost count, bro. <laughs> okay, too many episodes, but you know, it's a new episode, though. So It's the first episode of the year. Yeah. If you're coming back from last year, thank you. If you're coming, if you're new, thank you. And so, guys, before we get to this topic, on today's video, we're going to be talking about the famous funny-ass comedian, Cat Williams. But before we do that, we just want to talk about the new year a little bit and then get straight into the juice, okay? So, guys, what's up? Not much. Uh, I started off the year sick. Kind of sucks, but I mean, I'm getting out of it just now. Oh, yeah? yeah. Flu? No, uh, just fuck. Well, I guess uh, some type of flu. Just got fucking mucus, and that's it. We started off strong, baby. Oh, yeah. We bulking. Yeah. Yeah, you know dude. I, I've been bulking. I've been, I've been enjoying myself. My yeah. Time. I've been enjoying myself. <laughs> But uh, I feel like since I've been running a lot outside now again, yeah. I feel like it like evens it out. So like, mm. yeah, yeah. But I try not to eat past eight. That that that's the mission. Past eight, I try not to eat anymore. But man, I made a big mistake, Why man. Though? Oh, because um, I don't like going to bed bloated because I can't sleep. Uh -huh. I don't. It's weird. If yeah. I go to bed bloated, I can't sleep anymore. That and then your body takes longer to metabolize your food if you eat past eight. Yeah, I, I think the number seven or something like that. Yeah, uh, 7 something PM. like that. But, um, man, uh, I was telling you, man, I took the pre-workout like 7.30. I just got mm -hmm. a new one for me, right? New one for me, right? Yeah. But, um, and, bro, I went to bed like 2 in the morning, bro. I could not <laughs> fucking sleep, bro. I told you last time, like, don't take anything like, after fucking 6. Damn it. It was like, I took a 7.30, right? Yeah. I got to the gym. And it was like, bro, it was crazy. It was like, damn, bro, I can't fucking sleep anymore. I was my heart was beating a little too fast. Like, damn, bro. Like, I feel like I was dying. <laughs> yeah, like I can hear my heart. I can see my heart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now if it's if it's seven, I'll take it. But anything after seven, I would not take a pre nah. I, I'll just like maybe buy like a Red Bull and like sip on it. Just sip yeah. on it. Just a little sips and that's it. And like I'll throw the rest away. If anything, I think the cutoff time for like taking pre is like six, maybe even five. Because right. last time I took pre at uh, six. I was still awake, like, at 2, 3 in the morning. Right, dude. I don't know. Dude, I could not sleep, bro. Oh. I even took melatonin, and it wouldn't that help. Yeah, same. And mm -hmm, I, I couldn't go to sleep. I was like, fuck. I got to say this. this, bro. If you're going to take pre-workout past, like, uh, like 7, you got to kill yourself. Like, I, like in the gym. Oh, yeah. You uh, got to <laughs> like I, you gotta wear yourself out. That dramatic pause. <laughs> that was a long pause there. <laughs> Well, yeah. yeah, but like you gotta like go harder, like harder than you usually go if yeah. you take that shit, cause you're not gonna be able to sleep like you absolutely said. destroy yourself in the gym. And then you gotta run like two miles after. That. <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, like I said last time, if you're taking, if you're new, especially if you're new to the gym and you want to try to take the workout, don't take it after five. If you're gonna take anything after five, take pump, pump from Alpha Lion. That shit is zero caffeine, but you still get that insane feeling. Yeah, and if you're really tired. Like what I started doing after seven, because I usually go after seven. Yeah, I'll just do a little bit of honey and some salt. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The honey, honey and salt. salt. Yeah, the yeah. old natural. It's not like crazy, but it like it helps a little bit. So I'll do that. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But guys, um, I don't oh, know if you've oh, been. What's up? Let me interrupt you before we got a crazy story today. So. Oh yeah, we do. We're just gonna be in between the what juice. story? That crazy ass story we heard uh, in the afternoon. Yeah. About a friend, about a friend, about a friend. Who knows a friend? I who knows guess a friend. we can talk about that. Uh, yeah. who, know, who knows a friend that can't run in their neighborhood anymore? For real. <laughs> <laughs> but right. um, let's, let's get it started off. All right, guys. So for people that don't know, um, there's this show on YouTube called The Shay Shay Show, right? Brand new show. Um, Brand new podcast. He's fairly new. He has a, a few a few hundred thousand at the time that that video came out, right? But now he's like up to like almost one point something million yeah. subscribers on YouTube, right? So he interviewed someone called Cat Williams, right? I'm gonna yeah. give you a little bit of background of who he is so you can understand. He's super famous. He's like the he's like the George Lopez. He's like the probably the, your um, number one comedian. He's right probably now. like the Gabriel Iglesias, like yeah. like for the Hispanics. You know, he's like he's up there, right? Yeah. He's been doing this for a long, long time, right? So people that don't know, uh, Mikhail Cat Williams. Uh, born September 2nd, 1971, is an American stand-up comedian and actor. Uh, you probably know him from Friday After Next. He played uh, well, Money Mike. Friday, too. Yeah. Huh? His first movie was Friday. Yeah. But, like, the movie that people started knowing him from like, uh, Friday yeah, After uh, Next. They gave him more Money Mike, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, he's he was that pimp, the one that got the <gasps> pliers and grabbed Terry Crews' ball, right? <laughs> Everyone knows that from that, right? Yeah. Um, he also played uh, the voice actor on Boondocks. Um, his name was. Uh, you remember that guy? Um, damn, where is it? <laughs> Uncle Ruckus? No, no uh, uh, Uncle Slickback. Ruckus. Slickback. Oh, Slickback. Okay, you remember okay. that episode? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he played Slick. Oh, he was a he's he's, he's he makes a good pimping actors yeah. like a good. All right. Also. Before he was called Cat Williams, he used to be called um, Cat in the Hat. Cat in the Hat, and then he got sued by fucking. Disney. And then Disney, well, he didn't get sued. Uh, Disney sent him a deceased, oh, yeah. a deceased letter, and um, but we were looking at it before the podcast that Disney doesn't own the rights to him, but I guess he didn't have the money at the time to fight the case, yeah. so he just ended up changing his name, right? Yeah. Disney out here being rats from the beginning. Yeah. yeah. So um, for people that don't know um. He's from Ohio, right? Um, he was born, and right, he was he was born there, but raised very shortly there. Yeah. So, um, his parents are Jehovah Witnesses. They they do like missionary stuff. They they'll go like different countries and like, and do all this stuff. So at an early age, he had like, he had different perspectives on human beings. Like he saw that like, like even though you live in Haiti and some person might live here in Georgia, like we're all the same. They're all the same, right? At the yeah. end of the day, they're all the same. Just because a small amount of people are bad doesn't mean the majority. Bad. It's bad, right? So uh, it says here that he got emancipated, but he didn't because emancipation would mean that like his whole family would get separated. Yeah. So what what he did is that um, his father was very abusive, right? His father would beat him, and like I, I guess he got to the point where he had to leave. So it, it sounds like it was pretty bad, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, he said in the interview that um, he um, tried to like talk to like I guess the social services, but. Um, his only concern was that since he has two younger brothers, he wanted them to stay together. Yeah. He didn't want to get separated. So um, the lady said that it was impossible. She said, oh, uh, we can't guarantee that. Yeah. So if they couldn't guarantee something for him, then so his best option was to leave, right? So um, he went to a truck stop, right? He saw this truck driver, and then I think one of them was going to the West Coast, which is so California. Cal- Cal- going to California. And then another one was going down to Florida, Florida. and then another one was going to, like, cold-ass state. It was, like, three. I three Colorado? Yeah. It, it was somewhere cold, right? Yeah. And he was like, man, I'm trying to leave the cold, right? <laughs> so he ended up going to Miami. Yeah. Right? So he went to Miami. Um, he was homeless for a short period of time. He and lived so, in the park. I forgot what it's called. Um, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So he met a lot of homeless people, right? Yeah. So um, he said that he met doctors, lawyers, dentists. Crack addicts. That Pimps. Well, yeah, well, like they were. Well, the yeah, he said. Pimps. He said. Well, well, yeah. Everyone there is, is a drug addict, right? <laughs> um, but he said that before they were that they, they all had lives, right? Yeah. They said that the one thing they all had in common is that the drug ruined their life, right? Yeah. So they were talking about how they had a house, they had a family, they had kids, He's and like, then now this dude one mistake, money. yeah, one mistake ruined it, caused everything. So at an early age, he saw what he saw, drugs did to you. So like he's very smart, right? Because yeah. so either you learn. By someone else, or you go live with it yourself. So he learned from them, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. So that happened, right? You know, stuff happened. He grew up, and the thing that really fascinated me about Cat Williams as a young individual, um, that he would like to read a lot. You know, he read so much. He said that he said in his time as thirteen year old, he read over two hundred books. Like it was so many books. Like so, just imagine how many books he has now, right? So he's a big reader, and. But something that really fascinated me is that he said that the best and most interesting book that he learned the most from is the Holy Bible, right? Because he's a, he's, a, he's a devoted Christian, right? Mm-hmm. So that happens, right? Um, he grows up and then he comes back to the West Coast. Is that so? Is that is that accurate? He comes yeah. back to the West Coast, or no? Or he goes to um Te- Texas. He goes to Texas. I yeah. think he went to Texas and then San Francisco. No, wait. He was talking about a nunnery, bro. Yeah. He, he goes, or basically he travels all over yeah. the United States because when he started being a stand-up comedian, he said, okay, I'm making the white folks funny. Like, the white folks laugh at my jokes, right? So he went to a state where, like, the, the where, like, ethnicity. Well, he said that he wanted to do it 50-50, right? Yeah. He wanted somewhere where yeah, it, was, was it was blacks and whites, right? So if I can make both of them laugh, you know, cool. Okay, now... So his goal was to make humans laugh, right? Not just certain individuals mm-hmm. laugh, right? Certain ethnicities. So, and he also performed at churches, right? So he had his, his clean, like, comedy skit. Like, no cursing. Yeah, no, no cursing, sex, no, drugs, no nothing, vandalism, yeah. no nothing, right? And then he also had his like yeah, his up. cut for, for the actual, for the people that yeah. like to have, people that, you know, like dirty, Dark you know? humor. Yeah, exactly, dark humor. So that happens, right? He goes um, he goes back to California after a few years, right? So he's like very, he's like experiencing different states and doing all this stuff, right? So um, 
Ice Cube, he's a he's a producer, right? Is that what you call him? Producer, movie producer, maker, actor. actor. He's he's everything, yeah. right? So he had a role for uh we're we're gonna talk about Friday after next because that's the one thing oh, yeah, he, yeah, he yeah. focused that's on, the right? Big one, yeah. So um so they they made that movie and then um he got this role, right, where he said that that they were like I think he was like Actor number two hundred and one to like yeah, do the interview or something. Like it, was, yeah. it was it was some high high number, right? Yeah. So he goes and does the interview, right? And then Ice Cube automatically knew. Like Ice Cube did like the lie. He's like, oh, as soon as I saw him like perform the skit, like I knew it was him, right? Yeah. So there's this other actor. Uh, for people that don't know him, he played the Santa Claus, and mm-hmm. the in the role. Um, his name was what was his name again? Um. We just talked about him. Um, Ricky Smiley. Ricky Smiley, right? So he wanted to play the pimp, right? <laughs> but um, I just keep talking to him and told him, oh, you, Brad, you're much better playing the Santa Claus, right? Because um, Cat Williams plays a better pimp, right? So that's how the beef started, right? A long, long time ago, 20 years ago, right? So that happened. And um, Cat Williams said that there was a, a role in the script that said that he was going to get raped by uh, yeah. the actor that played Terry Williams. But Ice Cube came out and denied that. He said that he would never have something like that in his show. Yeah. And then why would he have that in comedy, right? Like, like no one finds rape funny, right? No. So I don't know if maybe... I don't know what the hell happened there, right? Yeah, it was probably somebody else on the team that fucking... Yeah, that insisted, shit right? Yeah. So that happens, and then boom, boom, boom. Um, years later, um, Cat Williams is very big. Oh, he's not very big for, but he, he always lets him know that he doesn't want to sell his soul, right? He doesn't want to do something that he doesn't believe in, right? Because I'm guessing selling your soul is you doing something that goes against your morals, right? Yeah. Going against your religion, going against whatever, right? <coughs> so he, he brings up um, Steve Harvey a lot. He brings up um, Kevin Hart a lot. He brings he, out uh, P. Diddy, um, Kanye okay. West. You uh, mentioned Ludacris. Uh, Ludacris. Um, he brings up uh, so many uh, African-American um, comedians, actors, songwriters, whatever you may call it, right? And he goes and tells them that they've sold their soul, right? Yeah. And then he also goes and says that they false claim to do certain things, but they didn't do it. For example, Steve Harvey said that when he was growing up, he was homeless, right? Mm-hmm. And he says that he wasn't homeless, that he took his story because he was homeless. Yeah. And then also he said that Ludacris is making $10 million of film for Fast and Furious, right? Yeah. And then he also said that Kevin Hart was a a, a plant. Is that what like, the word is? A plant? Uh, uh, an industry plant? Yeah. An is industry that what you call plant, it? Yeah. When basically... Like that motherfucker started getting shows, Netflix series, movies, out of nowhere. selling out arenas, right? <gasps> but he says you can ask anyone. No one yeah. has knowledge of going to a sold out arena of, of Kevin, Kevin Hart, Hart right? Yeah. So I was like, damn. I was like, okay. Like now that he says that, it makes sense, right? And then something that was really funny, right? He was like, well, to Steve Harvey, you know, he said there's seven people that we know that. That say that they owe everything to her wife, do this, but they all look the same. They're light skin. They've never had an interview. You like know. you can't. No one has ever interviewed them. Why? Because <laughs> he's probably saying, "What are they like robots or something?" Like, yeah. what was he inferring? Like, are they like and they're like not people? They're yeah, not they're people. Like they're like they're like I guess the Illuminati sent them or something like that or something. I, I was trying to like, I'm like, hmm. So then I switched up Ludacris, right? Light skin, Steve Harvey's light skin. I'm like yeah. Will Smith, light skin, light skin. Yeah. But um, Jada Smith, she's different though. She's a different breed. She's she's something else. Yeah. <laughs> she, she's actually been interviewed. She a Bruh, I saw but it. it wasn't like a lot. Yeah, it wasn't a lot. Yeah, yeah. No. and then he also talked about um, um, Chris Tucker, right? His name Chris Tucker. Chris Tucker. Um, he was like, "Why would you have a man that don't smoke blunts play the actor a smoky smoky right?" His name yeah, smoky. I'm like Brett, and then he does have a point, right? If the actor don't smoke, why have him play a smoking actor? Yeah. But then again, it is acting, right? That's how you grow. So there, there, there was a lot of stuff that I agreed with, and there's a lot of stuff that I I was like, hmm, okay, like it could go both ways, right? Yeah, definitely. You gonna say something? I I don't know if it was on Snapchat or on the in, no, it was on Snapchat. They put a a part of um, a stand up that Cat Williams did. And he was talking about putting gas and stuff like back in the day and like now versus now. And then they um, compared a video. The first it was a uh, cat and then it was Steve Harvey. And Steve Harvey basically said verbatim word for word, like everything of the joke. But he just like switched like two words. Oh, yeah. And I was like, I was like, I guess he's telling the truth. I was like, damn. Yeah. Because he said Steve Harvey stole his jokes and a lot of other people's jokes. Like he's like yeah. a copycat. 
like a big copycat. Oh, really? Yeah, he's not. An oh, he's known for that though. He's known for copying drugs, yeah. right? Um, yeah, he has like what five TV shows, like Family Feud. Um, what's the other one? Um, and I think Family Feud was the one that was copied off of somebody else that was already doing a show before then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. in the in the nineties. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I guess if if there's a good idea, you can make it better. Then I guess it's good, right? I mean, I don't know about better. Bro, I mean, everyone goes there. Like, everyone watches that shit still. Yeah. Maybe. Like, if you're older, right? Maybe yeah. not us, because we're younger. I don't really watch TV no more. I'm more on my phone. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, the older generation, like, people are, like, above 35. They they, they, they still watch Family Feud. <coughs> and, you know. But, where are we getting all this information from? Let me tell you. So, like I said, there was a YouTube video, right? So let me read to you so you can understand where it's coming from. So Shannon uh, Sharp, right, his name? Shannon Sharp. So in January, so right now, Cat <laughs> yeah. uh, Williams was featured on the Shannon Sharpish podcast called Shay Shay the Club Shay Shay. Club yeah. Shay Shay, Club right? Shay Shay. Yeah. This episode gained significant, significant attention with over 18.5 million YouTube views in less than 48 hours. That's a lot. Yeah. If you know YouTube... That's a, That's lot, a lot, a lot of views, Especially right? Especially nowadays, because YouTube. Oh yeah, isn't hell that yeah, big. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, YouTube's big, but, but it's like, like it's not it's, how it used to be, yeah. right? So, um, so less than forty-eight hours. Williams forthright and humorous discussion on various topics, including his experience in the entertainment industry, his approach to comedy, and perspectives on fellow comedians. During the interview, Williams remarked. Well, as a comedian, you get free drinks at the club. So all the comedians either turn out to be connoisseurs. You remember he said that? Yeah. Like or, myself or, or straight alcohol. up down alcoholics like 60% of Hollywood, which is <laughs> funny as hell, right? <clears throat> he also shared his candid views on acting, saying Ricky Smiley and Tyler Perry, he can play it. He can't play a man to save his life. They play good woman. And I believe that the best actor should play the best role. That's what you were saying earlier, right? That's crazy. That's and fucking then, funny. So I, I had to write that down because that shit was funny as fuck. I don't know if you remember this, but he put it in his contract that if he ever does a movie with Ricky Smiley, he oh, has yeah. to wear a dress. I, well, I don't know if that's real. I don't know. Uh, he said it pretty seriously, so I don't know. I don't know if that's real. But well, I mean, hey. then again, when have you seen Ricky Smiley and Kevin Hart do a movie where Ricky Smiley isn't wearing a dress? That's true. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's just sad. And then half of Tyler Perry movies, he's a woman. Yeah. yeah. His biggest one is Big Ma- uh, What? Big Mama? Nah, Big no. Mama plays the other guy. Um, yeah, the Martin guy Lawrence. from uh, Martin, Martin, Lawrence. Martin Lawrence. He's another guy, he said. Yeah. Yeah, because Martin Lawrence went away. And then he said, he took Cavaliers. Whenever I come back, and then you'll be in my movie. And he's like, yeah, whatever it is, I'll do it, right? Yeah. So he came back and he said, oh, uh, I want you to play Big Mama. And then kind yeah. of like, nah, that's against what I believe Ooh, in. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, as of now, it's been three days since the vi- the interview went live, and there's 26 million views and still growing. Damn. So as of right now, this video. How many days? Three days. Yeah. Sure. By the time you guys see this video, I mean, yeah, might that shit will probably be like 30, 35 million. He's popping, popping right now. He even said it. He's like, well, people are going to talk about this podcast today. And he's yeah. like, if they get offended, you know why. And like, That's true. hella people are getting offended. Like, all the people he called out, they're like making fun of him and stuff. I'm like, oh. I that guess he's crazy. Right, it makes you wonder too. I got a quote for the end of the podcast that he said. Uh, it just really hit me right here, bro. So what I do mean, you guys? So what do you guys think about everything he said? Like, if you could come with a conclusion of about like maybe maybe you hadn't finished the whole podcast, but as much as you guys have watched, what do you guys yeah. think on that? I mean, there was a lot of people that made a pretty decent argument saying that because I think he said he read more than a like. 3,000 books. He read, like, his whole lifetime, right? He read yeah. a lot. Well, he read uh, a lot when books. he was younger, he said he read, like, over a couple thousand books. Is that what he said? Yeah, that's what he said. Oh, damn. I don't know. I mean, it's probably possible. I mean, I know I used to read a shit ton of books when I was in fucking middle school and elementary, but I don't remember ever reading that many books. If you put your mind... I mean, if your parents sit you down and do it, or, like, if you have the discipline, maybe you can do it, but, I mean, personally, I don't know. Hundred percent, hundred percent. So, what's your inclusion? I mean, somebody didn't have to fact check that. I think he's semi capping. Yeah, maybe. Okay. I so, could be wrong. So, your conclusion to the whole the podcast, the podcast that he it's made. Not well, no, that that's just that's just. Uh, well, I mean, he's smart. He's an intelligent being. Like you can tell 
just you can tell just by the way he led that fucking podcast. Like shit, Shannon, he was doing great to start off, but after like the first three minutes, that boy carried Kat that shit, bro. Carried the whole interview. And there was a point like ten minutes in, twenty minutes in, where he was like he was holding his cup and he put it to his lips, but he wasn't taking a sip. But Shannon at the same time was taking sip after sip after sip. And he was telling him, he's like, yo, you're getting a little loose. He's like, what are you talking about? I haven't, I've had one sip. You're over here having all the sips. Bro, he caught that man lacking, yo. He was looking. Like, <laughs> that bottle, the bottle they were drinking, that shit looked expensive that as cognac fuck, looked bro. Good. And he said it was so smooth, too. Oof. Yeah, I even he definitely, yeah. So your conclusion is that he's a smart individual. Definitely. And what's your conclusion? Um, it's definitely smart. I like. I wanna. I didn't know he was that smart. Like, I just thought he was like a funny dude, you know. Yeah. And then like he came out and he like he impressed me, bro. John, what is your conclusion on that? Well, after doing a lot of research on him and like maybe watching a lot of videos and old <clears throat> jokes that he says, um, he's someone that likes to study the art, right? He likes. He's someone that likes to be prepared for things. Yep. He likes um, he likes going like the extra mile to make sure he's successful, right? He gets all the facts too. Um, he also likes he also likes not to. I don't know what the word would be, but like, you know, he's he's humble. He's humble, but he knows what he's worth, right? Yeah. So someone who's humble but knows what they're worth will never get done wrong, in that sense, right? So my conclusion is that he's a good individual. That maybe went through some traumatic stuff that maybe shaped him into the person he is. And that's why he expresses himself the way he does, right? Um, I don't agree with everything he said. There's some things that, you know, you know, could be a little better. But a lot of the stuff he said, I do agree with. Yeah. Like, you know, um, like he said, like, hypothetically speaking, if there's a God out there, I would want to have a good example, right? Because the way I see things is um, judgment day will come, right? Yeah. One day you will die and... Say there's no heaven, right? Hypothetically speaking, right? It's okay. You die. It's fine. Yep. But say there is a heaven, right? You go upstairs and, you know, judgment day comes. He's right next to you. He's like, hey, son, let's look through your life, right? This is what you could have become. This is what you did. This is what you did. So you could have done better. Like, I'm like, damn, like, I literally spent all my life doing stuff horrible. And that's what I got from him. Like, like live your life being scared of the Lord, right? Live your life. Being like, oh, if I do this, will, will the Lord be okay with that, right? And you know if it's okay. Yeah. If it's something that goes against what you believe in, then it's not okay, yeah. right? So, 100%. Yeah. He's, he's, he's a good person. He's a good human being. He just he just needs to calm down on his jokes. He be roasting people too hard, man. Like, he was doing this interview in Atlanta for his show, right? Oh, where you're talking about the one? Where, where, the, where that, where that oh, lady was interviewing but, him and stuff. But, but she he, deserved he it. He said it. He, he, he said talked it. about it, like. Go ahead. <clears throat> he talked about it. He was like, he was telling Shay Shay that he was like, she told me before the interview, she wasn't going to mention anything. She was going to congratulate me on the Emmy. Like, wasn't gonna like he just got an Emmy for that. Like, he wasn't, she wasn't going to bring up any personal life. And as soon as the camera <laughs> started rolling, she started trying to, she tried to bash him. Mm -hmm. And he was like, nah, bitch, uno reverse, ho. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was funny as fuck, yeah. That shit was so funny. They had me cracking all the day. <laughs> like, bro, she needs to re retire the podcast after that. It was, it was, it was that bad. And then Shay Shay was slipping, bro. Yeah, <laughs> I'm talking about equal equality, like equality and shit. Oh, yeah? And yeah, he's yeah, like, "You sure equality. you want to put this on?" He's like, "You slipping a little." Yeah, like, oh, <laughs> hey, that's true, man. Yeah. Hey, man. That interview was wild though. I, if you haven't seen it, I, rec I a thousand percent recommend yeah, to go watch it. If you haven't seen a TikTok clip, where are you living? Like, there's a yeah, TikTok clip. Yeah, yeah, everybody's talking about it on TikTok. It's crazy. So he, we're gonna. Yeah. And he said the truth will come out in 2024. Like yeah. he's like all lies will be exposed. That's yeah. what, he what he said. Is and I believe it, bro. I mean, 2024. What a way to start off 2024, yo. Yeah, so many views, yo, bro. I don't know. I don't know if it's like just me or like everybody around me or like everybody, but like I feel like everybody's like. Pretty positive on 2024. Like, you know, like... I mean, the year just started, son. No, I know, but, like, they, are like, have high hopes for it. Like, they're, like, everybody's, like, this is a year. Like, this yeah. is a year. Like... I'm not going to lie. A lot, I've seen a lot of people starting to get back in, like, starting to get fit, starting to go to the gym and shit, starting to get their shit together. I mean, it's good to see. Like, someone said 2021 destroyed me. 2022 taught me. 2023... Now you did the opposite. 20, it's three years. 2022, 23, 24. Okay. 
2022 uh, destroyed, destroyed me. Okay. 2023 taught me. Taught me in 2024 is my comeback. Yeah, the comeback, yeah. yeah. Hey, I'm, I feel like it, bro. I mean, I don't know. I, I see that every year. I don't know. I, I'm just like, I mean, if you're going to do something, do it. Like, no, that, no, no. You know, do it. That brings me to another thing I wanted to talk about. Like, do you believe in the numer- the numerology? The what? What do you, what do you mean? Uh, there's a there's a thing that you can do with your birthday. You add it up, and then if it's a double digit, you add those two together, and it makes your one number that you you get. Um, and they say that 2024 is the year of the dragon. So it's the number eight. 2024 is the number eight, and then um, what else? Um, like mine, I think mine's. E- Mine was uh, 13, so it ended up being 4. And then it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a really complex thing to talk about. I'm going to be completely honest with you. But basically, if you were born in the year of the dragon, like Shaggy Bay over here, then this is your year. Like, this is the year where you're successful. And if you were born in the year of the dog, which is the enemy of the dragon... It's not going to be your year. Oh, really? Hmm. That's interesting. I don't know. I've look, never Look been... into it. Yeah, I know you probably pro- probably don't believe in it, but no. look into it because that's just pretty interesting. And, like, out of all the things that I've been seeing, like, a lot of, a lot of shit's making sense. It's kind of scary how much sense it's making, too. Hey, bro. Maybe I become rich and famous. Yeah, that way. <laughs> For real. <laughs> Ain't sure. Nah, but yeah, bro. Like, I feel pretty positive about this year like <clears throat> i have some goals that i want to like accomplish and you know just got to put my mind to it that's all you got to do man just never take no for an answer man mm-hmm. no matter what it is no matter what you're looking for no matter where you want to see yourself in life just keep doing it you know um yeah the best thing i can say is stay busy you know stay busy yeah you know stay busy stay man. busy and that's mind your business say. bro Hey, man, I do that all the time, so don't, I'm good at that. Yeah, <laughs> like, don't stick yeah. your nose into somebody else's business. If you see somebody <coughs> in neighbor. trouble, obviously help them. If you see somebody <laughs> in trouble, help them. But, I mean, if if somebody's doing something that doesn't concern you, fuck off, bro. I mean, unless it's, like, beating a woman or something. Yeah, I mean, that's what I said. Like, if you see somebody in trouble, help them out. Oh, but, like, yeah. if it doesn't concern you, if it's somebody's doing their own thing or trying to do their own thing... Leave him alone. Yeah, I want to get... This is, this is, like, a little bit off topic. Why do you want to get your <laughs> opinion, bro? Oh, that story. No, no, no. I don't know if we're talking about the same thing. But um, oh. would you be your kids? Oh. To lecture them? Like, obviously not fucking beat the fuck out of them. But, like, a, a little slap, uh, a spank. Chanclazo. Fucking chancla, John. Is this off record? <laughs> 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 Whatever you want, bro. Off record? Um, I feel like my... I feel like kids need to be disciplined, you know? Of course. Um, 100%. When a kid is small, you know, they're very vulnerable to, like, everything. everything you, know? Right. you know, anything that happens, anything people say, it affects the way they think, right? So, um, it's like a it's like a little, like, egg, right? You have to nurture it. You have mm-hmm. to... Um, take care of it. You know, take care of it. And, you know, whenever it acts <clears throat> up, you have to correct it, right? Because mm-hmm. if you teach a kid... That he messes up and actions don't have consequences. He's gonna live his life doing whatever he wants, right? And then it's it's very common that people don't understand that one mistake can cost everything, right? One mistake, even if your whole life you acted correctly, one mistake can ruin everything. Can ruin everything, right? Yep. And it may take years and years to make it back up to come back, but the years you've lost, they're already lost, yeah. right? So, like, I feel like if you put that into the kid's head, like, everything you do has actions, right? It might there be a positive. Yeah, consequences. Yeah. Well, I feel like consequences sounds negative, right? Everything you do is actions because it could be a or, positive yeah. action. It could be a negative okay, action, right? Okay, yeah, so, everything you do has actions, right? So, either either some, everything you do has an action, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I'm, I'm telling you, if you do this, this will happen. If you do this, that will happen. Because a lot of kids now be like, oh... I fuck up, I learn from it. Okay, I understand that. That's part of life. But sometimes you learn from other people, right? And that's something that kids nowadays don't understand. So, mm-hmm. you know, be like, hey, if we do this, I have to whip you because that's that's not correct, right? That's not, that's not, that's that, that goes against my beliefs. And I want you to grow being 
a good person because mm-hmm. I believe I'm a good person. So beating them is okay, right? Abusing them is different, right? Yeah. You know, if you just come home, you're drunk and you beat them, that's different, right? Yeah. You start scrying them. But he knows, hey, hey, if we do, if you make it known, you do this, 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 I'm going to beat your like, ass, I'm right? A, I'm going to lecture you. Like. And something that I learned, right? And, you know, being an older brother with my younger sisters, I learned this a lot. You know, if I say, if you don't clean your room, I'm going to take your phone. And if I don't do it, my word doesn't mean anything anymore. So she's going to be like, oh, I didn't clean and he didn't take my phone. Like, I don't have to clean, you know? Yeah, I'd be like, oh, and then say I come home, right? And the room isn't clean. Be like, oh, okay, just clean it up. And then, you know, it goes like, my word means nothing anymore. I get home, that room isn't clean. I'm taking that phone. And guess when she's getting it back six months later? Dang. Even though I said one month, okay. just so she can learn. Next time she gets her phone back, hey, I need that room clean. When I come back from the gym, if that room isn't clean, I'm taking your phone. Guess what happens when I get home? Room is like clean because the phone was gone for six months. Yeah. yeah. So now we're like, oh, I I know he's serious, right? Mm-hmm. So that's something that parents. I'm not accusing of any parents, but I see that a lot with parents, right? They'll be like, hey, clean your room, wash the dishes. Oh, if you don't do it, I'm gonna take your phone. Oh, if you don't do it, I'm gonna go beat your ass. And guess what they never do? They never Take their do. phone and beat their ass. So the kids know, right? So always be a man of your word, right? If you say you're going to do something with your kid, do it, bro. Because if not, kids are fucking very smart. They'll be like, okay, they'll take advantage of it. Oh, mm-hmm. he's not going to beat me. He's not going to yeah. do that. You know, I'm a motherfucker. Oh, he's going to beat me. I'm going to go do it right now. And then if you try to do it too late, then it's just like bad. It's, it's late because then yeah. at the end of the day, you know, you want your kids to grow big and strong. They're going to beating your ass. Be like, oh, no, nah, hell no. I'm the man of the house. Yeah. Hell no. You can't have that happen. But if you raise him good, even if he's big, have that respect and no i'm never touching my parents you know everything they say i always always look into with an open mind right yeah that's what i've learned from being the older brother and having siblings and like trying to be a i don't want to say a dad but like trying to raise them better because Mm -hmm. you know as a kid i didn't have like that kind of figure figure so it was just uh you were more like you know learning as i'm going making mistakes oh i did this don't do that you know get your driver license you know don't text and drive you know um, credit score you know credit score you know all this crazy shit right you learned it by yourself yeah you learn it as you grow up because you know when your parents aren't from here it's really hard because they don't know all they're focused on is making sure you're good you know making sure you have food stay in school oh Stay in school, stay in school, but they don't teach you everything else, right? You start learning that on your own, right? So that's something I want to teach my kids. What do you guys think? Yeah, I agree with you a thousand percent, bro. Because a lot of little kids nowadays are really disrespectful. (laughs) Holy shit, bro. And like, I had a, I have a little story, bro. We went to Petco one time to get food for our dog. Mm -hmm. There was some lady in the parking lot with her kid and he was like crying. And she was like, let's go to the store right now. It was a... African American woman. Mm-hmm. She and this goes back to kind of what he was saying, like mind your own business if it don't like, mm-hmm. uh, it don't involve like, you. It yeah. doesn't involve you. Mm-hmm. You know what that little kid did? What he do? He was like, "Shut the fuck up, mom!" Like in her face, and he yelled, "What, boy?" I heard him cry louder. She was like, "You're not gonna disrespect me like that." And she fucking whooped him, bro. Like right really? there in the parking lot, and like there was a bunch of other people, and like we were just looking at each other. I was like. I would do the same thing. Like I told some, <laughs> I told some white dude, and he was like, "Yeah, he's like these kids are need to be disciplined." And I was like, "That's like it's not my business. Like yeah. he needs to be lectured, you know." Yep. Shut the fuck up, he said. He said, "Shut the fuck up, mom." And it's crazy because a lot of people, like a lot of other young kids on TikTok, will influence each other and be like, "Oh, like they can't do anything to you because it's child abuse and this, that's this, the, and that's that. a bad thing. That's too. not child abuse." It's not. Yeah, it's not. Child abuse would be if you're doing nothing wrong, if they're fucking whooping you. That's child abuse. But, like, if you're disrespecting your parent in public, in public, like, yeah, like bro, bro, if they do that to their own mom, what are they not going to fucking do? To like, the rest of the world. Exactly. And, like, I was, like, I looked at him, I was like, bro, I would do the same fucking thing. My kid would not talk to me like that, bro. And that's why I wanted to ask you. Because I was like... That's like, I would never, ever in my mind, that wouldn't even cross my mind to ever say that to my mom or dad. Especially in public, in, you know. Especially in public. Yeah, that that people see, you know, it's different in public because, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah if, if he's doing that in public, just imagine what he's doing in the private. You exactly. Know? exactly. So, and that's a little yeah. short story I wanted to share. And then it also goes back to what, you know, he said about minding your own business if it don't involve you. So do you want to tell the little crazy story or... You want to skip that? You want to save it for another day? Um, I mean, it's it's, it's crazy, but it's not like stupid crazy. But um, we can talk about it. Ah. 
So, um. Spill the beans. Damn. <laughs> so, this is the story, right? So, um. A friend of a friend. I guess. <laughs> November 24th. Uh, I love this. Thanksgiving. <laughs> um. You know, uh, when you have neighbors and the neighbors are so close, um, you know, stuff tends to happen where accidents happen, right? Yeah. Which is understandable, right? So someone backed into one of the car, right? Into your yeah. car, essentially. Yeah, right? Say, yeah. hypothetically speaking, Hypothetic, right? Yeah. And then they leave and don't let nobody know, right? But Ooh. you know it was them. But you know it was them because your neighbor told you, right? Yeah. So then you check the cameras. And hmm, you see it. And they hit your car, right? Damn. So, you know, you go, you know, you try to talk to them civilized, like human beings. Yeah. And then they go, oh, yeah, I pay for it. And then bring me the receipt and I'll pay for it. But that's not how things work, you know. No. You give me the money and I go fix it, right? Because yeah. then how do I guarantee that you're going to fucking pay. pay me, right? Yeah. He could be, oh, I'll give him cash, you know, or all this bullshit, right? So I'd be like, no. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go bring you a quote. I'm going to show you it. And you're going to give me a check or you're going to give me cash. I don't care. Yep. Agreed, right? Get a quote, come back, you know. Um, knock, nobody opens. Knock again, nobody opens. Knock one more time, nobody opens. Okay. Hmm. He that's, don't open. That's weird. Interesting. Crazy. Okay. 911. What is your emergency? Um, yeah, could I get uh, a patrol officer down here? Um, someone did a hit and run um, last week, and I was trying to, you know, reason reasonably without getting the authority involved. But I feel like I have to get the authority involved because it might escalate, and I don't want it to escalate because mm-hmm. I know my I know my personality that once I I can go to zero hundred real quick, okay, and then you know they send an officer an hour later he knocks on my door, boom boom boom, hey what's <coughs> going on? I explained to him what's going on. Like hey man, I don't want to get him in trouble. I don't want him to get points because I hit and run into felony, right? Yeah. I was like I just want him to pay the money, and that's it. And we go our separate ways, right? Because I because I already have. A, like, people don't like me, right? People in my neighborhood, right? So, I go, you know, we knock, you know, he opens the door and he starts speaking Spanish, you know. He's like, oh, well, you got to get the police involved. Like, why are you act? Why are you acting like that? You know, you think you're hard because you, you were born here. You know, all this stuff, right? I, can, I try to ignore him, right? But it's really hard to ignore somebody when they're disrespecting you, right? Yeah. So, stuff happens. Um, you know, other people are involved. You know, they start bringing up other stuff. Like irrelevant. That, that are irrelevant to the yeah. situation, right? Crazy. You know, um, you know, he starts denying that he didn't hit the car, but he didn't know we had proof in our phone. Like the cameras, they clearly saw the hit. Yeah. So like, you know, stuff happens, right? Ends up writing the check, right? You know, and I don't want to get into every detail because you never know who can watch this, right? Mm-hmm. So he writes yeah. the check, right? You know, stuff happened. Do 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 do. Right? You know, the police does his thing. Yeah, you know, blah blah blah. This and that happens. A lot of stuff happens that I have to leave out because I just don't want to show people's business like that. You know, yeah, they have charges. They have charges, right? So <clears throat> a lot of stuff happened that that are the, probably the most interesting part of the story, right? That I told probably, you, right? Yeah, well. but I can't, I can't expose that, right? Yeah. So stuff happens, right? Just know they got charged. Just just know just know that stuff happened. The police did this thing, and and um, and we got we got the check, right? So. Later on, this leads on to the the story that I actually want to tell, right? So I was running in my neighborhood, right? Um, I like to run a lot. It helps me like stay in shape. It helps me stay um, have mental clarity when I want to like. If I have a goal, sometimes you know I can see the goal, but like on the way, it's kind of blurry, a lot of fog. So I, I like to run to make make fog go away, and I can see how like plan it out, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I run a lot. And I'm running in the dark where I live in circles, right? I'm wearing all black because I normally wear all black, as you may see. And um, I'm running, and then I hear, like, a little siren. I have on my, my Beats headphones, right? And like a little beep, beep. Like the little, you know how they look? <laughs> little beep, beep. And I'm like, fuck, what the fuck? I look back, and there's the cop right behind me. And then I'm like, fuck, I pull over, and then I'm already like, okay. Like, <laughs> I must have pulled over. You know, I pull over, you know, right? <laughs> and then he comes next to me, he's like, hey, son, what's your name? And then I go do 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 right, and then he's yeah. like, "Oh, how old are you?" You know, do 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 do, and then he's like, "Oh, um, I've been getting uh, I got called, complained that uh, there's someone running on all black, like running in circles, like looking at people's stuff, like trying to see what they can steal." Yeah. And I look at him, and I'm like, 
I thought he was joking or something, you know? Then he's like, I look at him, he's like, yeah, I'm like, do you know, like, is that you? I'm like, yeah, I mean, I'm the only one walking in all black, running in all black. <laughs> and then I show him my Apple Watch, he's like, hey, look, I've been running for like 30 minutes, like, it's not like a, it's not like a. Like you like stopping second, and Yeah, shit. stopping and stuff. And then I show him my records of the other days, right? Oh, look, like, I ran this day, I ran this day, I ran the other day. Like, I, I show him. Yeah. And he goes, oh, son, well, th- that's good that you're running, but, um. Maybe either run earlier or maybe stop running here because they're going to keep calling and I'm going to have to keep coming back. Um, because if someone says that they're scared for their life, then I have to do something about it. I can't not do something about it because if something does happen eventually, that will cost me my job. Yeah. So can you please do me the favor and then maybe start running earlier, start running somewhere else? Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? You know, I'm not here to argue, sir. Like, that's fine, right? But it goes to tell you that I already knew who made that call, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I knew who made the call. Someone that doesn't want to see someone like, you know, I don't know what's wrong with people, right? People don't, people don't like seeing other people succeed, right? Where they're being like healthy, where they're being, you know, having a nice car, this and that. Yeah. They don't like people seeing succeed more or they want to see you succeed, but not more than them. Yeah, that more makes than sense, them. Right. So it goes to say that like someone's always watching what you're doing. Right. So. At the end of the day, do stuff that makes you happy, right? So that yeah. that that that's what I wanted to get out of this. Do stuff. Someone's always watching. If you think nobody's watching, you're wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> someone's always watching. Either the man upstairs or the neighbor through his window. He's watching what you're doing, right? <laughs> but at the end of the day, if everyone's always watching, no matter what, then just do what makes you happy. If you want to do whatever, do whatever. So that's the point I want to make out of this. Like yeah. make a bad scenario come good, right? So. You know, I, w- I was telling you guys earlier, like, what the fuck has been happening to me? I'm like, bro, like, people are out to get me, man. Like, yeah. people are people are praying on my downfall. People are doing this. But guess what? I'm doing better than ever, you know? Mm-hmm. I'm doing better than ever because, you know, I do what makes me happy, right? If I want to wake up tomorrow and run 10 miles, I'm going to go run 10 miles. If I want to wake up tomorrow and eat 10 pancakes, I'm going to eat 10 pancakes, <laughs> yeah. you know? I'm letting you know, like, I'm, I do whatever makes me happy, right? Yeah. If it doesn't make me happy, I don't do it. End of story, man. Oh, well, bro, well. That's it, man. That's it. That's all you can do, man. You can only worry about yourself. That's it. You, you can try to help others, but if they don't want help, you can't help, you know? You know, and what's crazy about that is I'm pretty sure they can make a citizen's arrest if they keep if they keep if they keep making those false nine one one calls. Like the claims. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah so like yeah, it's a it few. gets to a certain point yeah. where like if they keep calling back for the same thing and nothing is happening and you're just running then they can be arrested. So, I mean, better watch out, bro. Don't be making false claims. It's yeah. been, I, I don't know if you've seen, like, st- Twitch streamers and stuff, like YouTubers getting swatted and shit. Oh. That goes, it's the same thing. Don't be swatting people, yo, because that shit comes back on you tenfold. Karma, man. Karma on doing stuff. That you shit, know. you get, li- I, there was a dude that got life in prison for swatting a person. Yeah. Damn. It, it's not funny, yo. Man, and like, okay, you know, no one knows who this person is, right? You know, but um, <clears throat> we went to a Wiley, right? With my mom and her boyfriend, right? Yeah. And you know, he's married, right? Yeah. Tell me why that dude was there with someone else at the Wiley, yeah. right? And I got so much venom I can like let out and ruin everything, right? Yeah. He was he was there with another woman, right? That's not his wife because yeah. I seen his wife. And I just didn't say nothing. I'm like, you know what? Karma's gonna do his thing. God's gonna God sees everything. Yeah. You know, I don't gotta to go tell his wife that you know he's doing stupid shit, right? Because God's gonna see this. You know, and he saw me. He saw me, and he like they moved to it like the other Def, side of the yeah. section. You know, and then like I'm like, bro, I ain't no snitch, bro. Mom raised no snitch. You know, if I see someone that I don't like getting fucked over, I'm not gonna say nothing. But if it's someone that I, I know, I'll say something, you know? Yeah. But someone I don't like, I'm, I'm not saying nothing. You know, I know. Every time I see you, I'm going to laugh. <laughs> and I ain't going to say nothing. I'm going to just laugh and smile. That's, you're getting cheated you're on, the, you know? know? So, <laughs> yeah, dude. So, hey, leaving that topic because that's toxic. To you know? each their own. <clears throat> each their own, guys. I think that's... That wraps 48 up the, minutes. God damn. I think that wraps up the little podcast. Um, yes, sir. Let yes, me, sir. Let me say this little quote real quick, brother. From Cat Williams? Okay. Yeah. Williams. All right. Cat Williams said, and I quote, he said, winners are not allowed to allow losers to rewrite history. Meaning hey, if you fucking working hard, doing your fucking job, and you start becoming successful, you shouldn't let someone that 
skipped the easy, like took the easy way out, like didn't struggle, like rewrite your history or history in general. And I agree with that. 100%, man. 100%. You know? Because it feels way better when you do something and put your all into it and struggle and get there slowly. Because it's, it's like they say, it's never about the uh, destination, it's about the journey. Mm-hmm. So you enjoy it way more. And, you know? All I got to say to that is amen. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. Y'all got any more quotes, sir? Y'all want to wrap this that little puppy up? up? It's, time to, it's time to land this plane, man. All right, bro. All right, guys. We want to thank you for the support. We're going to pop off this year. Uh, stay tuned for the bulk, me and John. This boy's still cutting. We're going to hit 315 soon on bench. You know what I'm saying? Something like That's it, and man. And then 405 on squat. And then, you know, like maybe four. Or I mean, five, six hundred pounds on deadlift, you know what I'm That's saying? That's your goal, yeah. man. I, I need to get back into that. I, I just haven't started that way. Yeah, I've been slacking with it, but I'm I'm slowly climbing it's back It's so hard to get hurt. It's yeah. so easy to get yeah, hurt. It's so know? easy to get hurt. I'm like, fuck, man. I don't know <laughs> if I want to hurt my back. Yeah, it's dangerous, but yeah. that's my goal, bro. We got to get back into it. That's the goal. Yeah. But thank you, much, thank you so much for watching, guys. Make sure to subscribe and like. Make sure to follow us on our social medias. And have a blessed, blessed day. We're going to try to be posting more on YouTube Shorts and TikTok also. So yeah. Stay tuned for some Stay funny ass videos. Yeah, we, we are out. Well, yeah, if, if y'all haven't seen it, go watch that dinner video. That shit was funny. That's funny, right? Peace. And we All are right. out. Peace. Peace.